Hi everybody, my name is Mr Barlow and welcome to episode 9 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 1, Area of Study 2, and in particular I'll be talking about the internal transport system of animals and how materials are distributed around an organism. Now cells need things to live. They need to get nutrients and they need to get rid of wastes. Now if you're a really small organism, you can just get whatever you need from the environment and if it's a waste, you can just get rid of it to the environment from your cells. So if you're small and you've got a really high surface area to volume ratio, you can just exchange materials directly with the environment. Unfortunately, if you get a bit bigger, you need to have specialized circulatory systems so all the fluid in your body can be transported around so that all the cells in your body get all the nutrients they need and they get a chance to get rid of all the wastes that they need to get rid of. Now there are two main types of circulatory systems. There's an open circulatory system and there's a closed circulatory system. In open circulatory systems, basically the interstitial fluid and this is uh, extracellular fluid, which is located in the spaces between cells. Basically, in open circulatory systems, open circulatory systems, it's just pumped around the body. So if you're really small, like an insect, um, an open circulatory system is good enough. It doesn't work really well, doesn't work very fast, but you don't have a very big body. But if you just pump that things around slowly, it works okay. But if you get bigger, maybe like the size of a human, you need to have a closed circulatory system. So in a closed circulatory system, the special circulatory fluid is separated from the interstitial fluid and it can have special properties. And closed circulatory systems also work far faster at pumping materials around the body. Now in mammals, the circulatory system is basically the heart pumping blood around all the blood vessels of the body. But to go into a bit more detail, what happens is the blood comes into the heart via the vena cava. It then goes into one of the four chambers of the heart, the right atrium. It then goes from the right atrium through a tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And then the heart pumps that blood up through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. So in the lungs, the blood gets rid of any carbon dioxide in it and it takes up oxygen. So it's now oxygenated. It then comes back to the lung, back from the lungs via the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. It then goes through another valve called a mitral valve into the left ventricle. And then the heart pumps again and the blood leaves the left ventricle via the aorta, which is the biggest artery in the body. And then it goes um, around all the arteries, which end up at arterioles, which end up at capillaries. And uh, at capillaries, uh, very, the very thinnest blood vessels, this is where nutrients and oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide are exchanged with the cells. And then the blood goes back through the veins uh, and then back through to the vena cava, the biggest vein in the body. And then the blood goes back into the heart, uh, you know, it's deoxygenated. And then the whole cycle starts over and over again. So blood is pushed around the body by the heart. And as a result, it's under pressure. So blood can either be under high pressure, and that's called systolic pressure. And it's under high pressure when the ventricles of the heart contract and push the blood out of the heart. And the other blood pressure is low blood pressure or diastolic pressure. And that's when the ventricles of the heart relax. So when the ventricles um, push the blood out, that's high pressure, and when they relax, it's low pressure. <laughs> so when blood leaves the heart, it ends up in an artery. And because blood's under really high pressure, when it first leaves the heart, and arteries carry blood away from the heart, arteries have to be quite strong because they're under quite a bit of pressure. So the blood travels through the arteries to capillaries, and capillaries are really small blood vessels and they've got a really large surface area to volume ratio. And they've also got really thin walls and that's so that materials can be exchanged really efficiently. After capillaries, blood goes back into veins and veins carry blood back to the heart. So blood is under less pressure in veins because it hasn't you know, just been pumped out of the heart. So veins are more elastic and they also have one-way valves in them 
and that stops blood from going the wrong way. Now the blood in mammals actually has three main components. It's got red blood cells, and the job of red blood cells is to carry oxygen around the body. So red blood cells have got hemoglobin in them, that's what makes them red. Blood's also got white blood cells, and the job of white blood cells is basically to fight disease. And blood's also got platelets in it. So platelets um, basically clot the blood. The other thing that makes up blood is plasma, and that's pretty much the fluid containing all the other stuff. So it contains um, dissolved gases and proteins and hormones and nutrients and wastes and everything dissolved. So that's blood. Red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and plasma. Now the last part of the circulatory system in mammals is the lymphatic system. And this is an open circulatory system that returns the interstitial fluid back to the closed circulatory system using one-way valves. So there is always heaps of fluid in between cells and that does need to be brought back to the circulatory system some, some way and the lymphatic system does that. Now lastly I'll talk about transport systems in plants. And plants have got vascular tissue which is basically like transport tissue and there are two types of transport tissue in plants. There's xylem and there's phloem. Now xylem carries water and inorganic nutrients up the plant from the soil and it's composed of dead cell walls and it's strengthened by lignin which is this really complex chemical compound. Now xylem is located in the middle of the stems of plants and the movement of nutrients into plants and into the xylem occurs via active transport. And that's because the amount of nutrients inside a plant is far greater than the nutrients outside of a plant. So nutrients have to move into a plant via active transport. Water goes into a plant um, and then into the xylem via osmosis. And the way that all the things in the xylem, the water and the inorganic nutrients, is via transpiration as well as capillary action and root pressure. So transpiration is, um, well, it's kind of like all the water on the xylem is sucked up, kind of like a straw. And that's because when water gets to the top of the plant in the leaves, it evaporates. And that has to be replaced at the top, so it's replaced by water at the bottom of the plant. And that's basically what transpiration is. Now the other type of vascular tissue in plants, which is the phloem, transports sugars which are produced via photosynthesis uh, throughout the plant. So the phloem is composed of live cells with perforated ends, so it's got holes in the ends, so the liquid can go through the ends. Uh, the phloem is located around the outside of the stems of plants as opposed to the xylem which is on the inside. It also transports other uh, organic molecules too. So it transports sugars produced in photosynthesis but it also transports other carbohydrates and amino acids around the plant. Um, the way I remember the difference between xylem and phloem is xylem carries water and X and W are both letters at the end of the alphabet and phloem carries sugars and phloem and P and S are both letters which occur earlier in the alphabet. So xylem carries water and inorganic nutrients and phloem transports sugars and organic nutrients. And that brings episode 9 of the VCE Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr Barlow and thanks very much for listening.